Well, folks, it's time for another Rustic Ring EV Towing Challenge. And this time we have the big boy, the Silverado EV. And this isn't just any Silverado EV. This is the big battery 4WT. And I can't wait to show you how this thing performs on the Rustic Ring. This is our 85 mile extreme test loop to push electric vehicles to the max while towing. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Here I am to the floor. That is everything we got. Traction control flashing away. She's climbing, she's digging. Wide open to the floor, 370 kilowatt power output, Welcome back to another out of spec reviews video and welcome to another rustic ring. This is our extreme electric vehicle towing test where we put maximum loads on the back of electric pickup trucks and SUVs and run them in our just over 85 mile extreme test loop. This is where we're able to compare vehicles against each other as to how well they tow, but also give you a single vehicle review on city streets, highway, you know, crazy uphill and downhill to really push the thermal systems to the max, steering systems, chassis systems, et cetera, with maximum load on our electric test vehicles. So in this video, our test subject is the Chevy Silverado EV 4WT. I'm particularly excited about this one because this is the first electric vehicle, uh, electric pickup truck that actually seems like it might really work for towing. We're talking huge battery, huge range, huge capability, and well, it's gonna take on our toughest EV towing challenge here in Northern Colorado. So I'm gonna walk you through the testing procedures. We're then gonna jump in the truck. I'll show you how we hook everything up, walk you through some of the towing specific features of the Silverado EV. And then of course, we're gonna head out on the rustic ring to see how it does. This is the Silverado work truck, work truck, work truck, work truck. That's four WTs, and that means 215-ish kilowatt hours usable. I just want to put this in perspective. The first rustic ring we ran was with the Tesla Cybertruck. Hopefully, you've had a chance to look at that video where I really walk you through the area that we're going in and everything like that. That vehicle has 123 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is almost double. So that means that the range is almost double while towing and maybe even a little bit more. Um, we have a video previously on this channel where we have towed with all four electric pickup trucks. Well, the Rivian, the Lightning, this one, and the Cybertruck from Denver to Grand Junction and back over the Rocky Mountains, not just once, but twice. That's already on this channel. It's a long video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. The Rustic Rings, we're just talking about the Silverado today, but holy smokes, talk about battery capacity. The downside of that battery capacity, though, is actually you get a little bit less payload and a little bit less towing capacity than even the smaller battery Silverados. For example, the Silverado 3WT has a payload of, I think, over 2,100 pounds or so, and it can tow 12,500 pounds. That is the most capable electric pickup truck on sale. This one, because it's got the 24 module battery pack instead of the 20 module, it's 180 kilowatt hour versus 215-ish usable, like I mentioned, means that you do lose a little bit on your tongue weight, which means you lose a little bit on towing. If you come over here, I can show you the door card so I can show you the maximum ratings for this truck. By the way, this thing is a truck meant for work. It has a tire pressure rating of 61 PSI when cold. And you can see here our GC 
VWR is 19,700 pounds and the GVWR is 9,990. Our maximum trailer with a conventional trailer is 10,000 pounds with a 1,000 pound tongue weight, 10% tongue weight. And that's pretty much what we have here. Hooked up to the back of our Silverado about to go in our crazy loop is a weight distribution hitch. We should have used it for the Cybertruck, but I found it. We're using a weight distribution hitch. You should always do that when you're towing a heavy load. We have my Rivian R1T strapped down correctly at the wheels. I do have a very loose line just on my winch here, just in case something were to go wrong. There's no tension on that though. It'll allow the truck to work. And uh, yeah, appreciate all the comments in the previous video. A lot of people love this test. And uh, we're basically gonna run a bunch of vehicles in the rustic ring, both in the 10,000 pound category and the 5,000 pound category. So we'll be running the Tesla Model X, very soon. We should probably run an EV9 soon. We got a bunch of vehicles, anything with a tow hitch, we're gonna do this with, that's electric. And I also wanna benchmark against some combustion vehicles as well, as we look at the efficiencies and consumption along the route. So we have just about 10,000 pounds on the back of this truck, the trailer plus my over 7,000 pound Rivian quad motor large battery pack is the load category for the rustic ring 10,000 pound class. I actually think for the 5,000 pound class, Jordan, we're gonna use the smart car <laughs> because the trailer plus the smart car is about 5,000 pounds. So that'll be really funny. Um, the 4WT that we're using here, by the way, this uh, came to us from Chevy. So I wanna say a huge thank you to them for letting us use this truck and really get to experience it. You know, I have to say for a work truck version, the truck is fairly well equipped. It's got some really nice tech and things, but I'm really excited for the RST version. That'll be the super cruise equipped, air suspension, rear steer. It's gonna have so much content and it's actually not gonna be that much more money than this. Um, you know, that's gonna be just over $100,000, which is a lot of money for a truck, but when you consider the fact that the Tesla Cybertruck is $120,000, the one that we bought with the tri-motor, well, here you're getting a lot more battery pack capacity, almost the same amount of horsepower, not quite, but you know, it's still gonna be quite, quite quick. And yeah, driver assistance, which our Cybertruck doesn't have, all these little things, and it's like, damn, that's actually, it's like a battery pack with wheels strapped onto it and super cruise and nice seats, cooled seats, all that stuff. This one being the work truck version, again, no heated seats, no, it's actually manual seats, but then it's got like lane departure stuff and actually pretty good route planning and other things like that. So anyway, uh, the price on this one, if you could buy one, is just over 75 grand. I wanna say 77, but the pricing has changed because I heard the 3WT which if you get in the base fleet version is now under $70,000. That seems like a lot of truck for high 60s. This one's gotta be in the $70,000 range. It's hard to say because most people who are buying this truck, you need a GM fleet account. And if you're buying 600 of them, I'm sure you're not buying 600 of them at sticker. I'm, I'm truly not familiar with how that world works, but I'm sure there are some deals to be had. What I can't wait for is when these things come out of fleet and get sold into the secondhand market, holy smokes, we're gonna have a serious, electric tow rig, battery backup system, 214, 215 kilowatt hours. I hope they go pretty cheap. My fingers are crossed because that is just a beefy amount of energy capacity. We have dual motors in this particular one with a physical park lock. We'll talk about that uh, throughout the drive. That was an issue with the Cybertruck where uh, the Cybertruck has a uh, electronic rear parking brake that clamps down, but then also sometimes on steep hills can't hold it, especially if the brakes get hot. Here, it has a, a parking brake, yes, with a, a clamp on the disc brake, but also physical park locks, which should help in extreme situations, which this test is an extreme situation. And if we need to stop on a steep grade, I feel a lot more confident with this one. This truck weighs a lot. It's a beefy truck. I'm really curious to see how it tows with this much weight. It'll be a good direct comparison between this and the Cybertruck next. Of course, we're gonna run the F-150 Lightning, the Rivian, all of the other trucks in due time as soon as possible. I really wanna get benchmarking on this test but the tire pressures are set. The truck has been DC charged to 100%. I've taken it to the Electrify America station, topped it up pretty high, and then finished off DC charging here at the office on our 40 kilowatt station, uh, powered by diesel. <laughs> so pretty funny, but we needed it. It's actually gonna get hooked into the grid here uh, tomorrow. So we won't be charging on diesel anymore uh, anytime soon. But uh, I think we wanted to be a little bit more standardized with this test. We recognize that it's not like our highway range test procedures or something where every little ounce matters because this is a crazy loop and our driving style is gonna change a little bit. And we're just basically gonna see if we can overheat the thing or find any weaknesses throughout this test. But I do think it's important that we start with a warm battery. So the battery in this one is warm. 
And uh, certainly Tesla's thermal management system is pretty great, but I do want to do like an extreme hot weather version with our Cybertruck just to really push it to the max and compare it to other vehicles. So with that said, uh, let me walk you through some towing stuff on the inside of this truck. I just want to show you a couple things before we go. Like I mentioned, tongue weight, only a thousand pounds on this one. Payload, very light. Let's just look at the maximum payload on this one as well. It's only 1,413 pounds, which it's okay. It's certainly better than I think Hummer EV and some other things, but keep in mind, you put four people in here, plus stuff in the bed, plus stuff in the front trunk, plus a thousand pounds of tongue weight on a 10,000 pound trailer. You gotta be really careful you don't go over your maximum payload capacity. You can see we're charged to 100%. We have just over 2,000 miles on this particular example. And the only tow setting you have is right here, this little button that is uh, right by the uh, uh, parking brake. And this basically tunes the ESP systems, the throttle modulation, other modules in the vehicle to say, hey, we got a trailer on this thing. And as we drive, it's gonna learn the weight of the trailer, the behavior of the trailer. And in fact, on this channel, I actually already have a towing review of a Silverado EV with one of the uh, chassis engineers who talked to me a lot about the steering, uh, the brake calibration, everything that went into towing. So that's fascinating, I'll leave that linked below. The other thing I have is a trailer brake controller that is built in from the factory right here. You can adjust your gain plus and minus and you have the manual adjustments. And the thing that I really like about this compared to the way Tesla and Rivian do it is Tesla and Rivian use the scroll wheel on the steering wheel and it is a on off switch. When you toggle the scroll wheel, it puts the trailer brakes onto the maximum gain you have set. What's nice about having the squeeze is sometimes I don't want it to clamp down on the trailer brakes, but I'm just getting a little sway or something. I just want to slow down a little bit more with the trailer. I can just squeeze in on this and you get so much more granularity. And this little things like this show me that, okay, this truck is much better for suited, suited or at least designed intent for towing more than Cybertruck and Rivian, even though those vehicles can actually tow more weight than this particular example of the Silverado. So, with all of that said, the battery's warm. I don't want to give it too much time to cool down. We've hooked up the trailer. We're good to go. We're going to run our 85 mile test loop. I'll check in with you guys along the way to tell you about how it's performing. I really want to talk about the steering systems, the chassis systems, and of course the thermal systems. We are going to have to do a lot of regen. And one thing is we always leave on this test at a hundred percent state of charge. After the first hill climb, if you guys remember from the last episode up Wrist Canyon, we're going to be coming down for a couple miles. Now this being a big battery means that we're actually gonna still be probably at higher state of charge than the Cybertruck. Will it be able to regen that much? Uh, I'm really curious to see. It also does quite a bit of brake blending, a lot to get into. So let's get on the road, run the rustic ring in the Silverado EV 4WT. I imagine this is gonna set the benchmark for uh, percentage check-in points. I think we're gonna have the highest percentage check-in points throughout the loop here. So let's get in and do it. As we come into reverse, there is actually a trailer reverse line. So you can see it goes right on my ball right there and I can line it up to the trailer. So this is pretty good software. You can see we're using the weight distribution hitch right now. So I should be able to get it right in that red zone. We're not as low though. Right, yeah, so I will get it as close as we can without hitting right there. One thing to note is this vehicle does not engage the parking brake when you put it in park all the time, sometimes when you're on a hill. So if, you, if I let off the brake right now, we might roll a little bit before the physical park locks catch. So if you're right lined up with your trailer and then you put it in park, then the truck might move, which is unusual for an electric truck. Um, I'm gonna manually engage the parking brake, which then locks me in this position. So little things that you start learning as you tow with these vehicles, that's what these videos are all about. Let's go hook this thing up. Guys, while we're all connected back here, again, weight distribution hitch all set up. I do just want to mention there is a four pin and a seven pin connection, uh, which is really nice. No need for a step down adapter from a seven to four pin. I like how GM or Chevy gives you both options in this case. And also just to show you, we have no extra weight in the truck. The truck's empty. It's just strapped with maximum, maximum weight on the back. This is truly the rated maximum right here. So, um, yeah. So to turn on the Silverado, all I do is actually just hit the brake pedal and then it will all come to life. It says trailer brakes connected, USB device not supported, charging up our mics, but it is charging it. Yeah, no issues charging. So we got the cameras on, or sorry, the windows up. 
We're at 100% state of charge. I have the tow mode enabled. I have a bunch of screens that I can go through and we should reset our trip. So I'm gonna come here to vehicle status. A lot of people don't like the look of this software. Personally, I don't really mind it, but I'm not a big soft software guy. That's more Jordan's department. So yeah, this is from our towing over the Rockies, 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That was about the same actually as the Rivian, the Lightning and the Cybertruck. It wasn't too different. And again, this has much more battery capacity. So let's reset it. It goes to its rating of 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. That's its rated rating is my understanding. And then um, yeah, even because I have towing mode on, it's predicting 347 miles. I imagine it's gonna produce predict a lot less by the time we get to the top of the hill climb. So one thing we should do is we should turn climate on. We always run climate systems. We're gonna run 72 degrees. This vehicle does have a heat pump with heat scavenging, surprisingly. So a lot of people don't know that about GM products is they have a really actually sophisticated thermal system, not too dissimilar from the octo valve in the Cybertruck. And so we have all of that going and you'll hear the heat pump systems go and some valves move if you really listen closely, but it is fairly quiet. Uh, any thoughts, Alyssa, before we head out on our loop? Um, this truck has just really been awesome. I'm really excited to see what the consumer version is gonna be. Um, some heated seats would be nice, a little bit nicer seats would be nice Yeah, you, you won't have this material in, yeah. the, in the consumer one, but this, you know, it'll be the same drivetrain and battery and stuff. Right, so, I mean, it's something that a lot of people are sleeping on right now, and well, there's also not a lot of content out there as well, so that's why we're doing it, and uh, it should do good. It did good in the hill climb challenge, or the whatever towing challenge that you did. Over the Rockies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it did really well with that, and um, hopefully it Hopefully the thermals can handle the the regen side of everything. That's the biggest question. Well, that brings up a good point, which is we need to go into vehicle setup now. So I'm gonna come over here to, let's think about this. I think controls, uh, see more controls, drive and park. And here we go. We have traction control settings, we have speed limiter settings, and we have one pedal driving settings. And we have off, on, and high. Now, what's interesting is these all target the same level of deceleration uh, regardless of state of charge. What that means is if you're at, we're at hundred percent, the battery can't accept anything more. When I lift off the accelerator pedal in high regen, it's gonna give me a ton of deceleration force, but it's not actually regen. It's gonna be blending the friction brakes. And then if I go into on, the same thing will, will happen but um, essentially we're just gonna keep it in high. And when I notice the regen gauge getting maxed out, that means like the more I lift off, the less, you know, the same amount of regen I'm getting, then I know the friction breaks there. It's actually incredibly tuned. Me as a nerd, I would prefer to say, hey, give me all the regen off throttle and then I'll add friction brakes with the brake. But I think for most people to give a consistent driving experience, this works. The only thing I'm worried about is uh, towing in twisty mountainous territory and over utilizing the friction brakes with a system like this. I know the Hummer EV gives us a warning if I go over to do charge settings. Let's just see if I can pull that up here. Charging 100% and there is a, a warning that pops up. Yeah, doesn't seem to do it in this one. Um, yeah, it, we're close to 100% right now. I don't know why it thinks we're not. It just completed at 100. Uh, but it, the Hummer EV gives you a warning that says recommended max charge, 80% state of charge for tow it, for driving in mountainous terrain. And the reason for that is you want the battery to slow the truck down by using the electric motors rather than constantly on the friction brakes. But we're gonna play around with that, see how it feels. It gives me my kilowatt output and input, and that's what I'm gonna be monitoring. You pull back on the stock and down to get into drive. We're in tow mode, everything is good. The mirrors are quite large. The steering rack is very slow intentionally for towing. It's a compromise that the GM engineers took to basically give a great towing experience. And you'll notice that one pedal drive, if I lift off here, look at how much we slow oh, down. That's a lot. It's a lot and it's not really using regen at the moment. It's targeting a deceleration rate and using friction brakes. So let's head out of the office if you look ahead and start this rustic ring and uh, we'll do a city review first, then we'll do sort of a flat road efficiency check-in, talk to you about the hill climb, how it's towing up the hills, and then um, we'll come down, talk about the regen. We've got so much to get into as always with these. Let's do it. All right, we are pulling out onto the road now and the Rivian is behind us. And 
you can tell it's heavy for sure because I just gave it a lot of throttle. <laughs> and uh, wow, so one thing for sure is the weight distribution hitch is gonna be something really key with loads this heavy just to really take a lot of the weight off the rear axle and help disperse them. One thing we noticed with the Cybertruck was we were really spinning the front tires, climbing some of those hills, and this should really help, again, even out some of the weight in extreme situations. I, I think it's so funny that to keep up with the Jeep in traffic, I have to do between 80 and 100 kilowatts output just to match some of their acceleration. So at least here in the city, it feels good. The steering still has some weight to it. Uh, yeah, I'll give you some reviews as we go, but let's uh, hit the road and run this test. Coming into a traffic light here, you can see I'm going maximum 90 kilowatt regen, but if I lift off more, we're slowing down more, it doesn't add any regen. So that extra bit, again, coming in with friction brakes. Also, this is one of the very few trucks, this and the Lightning actually, have a brake by wire braking system. The Cybertruck does not, and the Rivian does not. Um, the Hummer EV does as well, and that means that it really has an enormous amount of braking force when you hit the brake pedal with or without a trailer. One thing GM got so right with their Ultium platform and honestly all of their trucks, I've driven their combustion ones as well, is the braking package on the newer vehicles is incredible. Um, not only do you get a ton of regen and a ton of brake blending when you lift off, but when you touch the brake pedal, the brakes are there, they're immediate, they're strong, and it's not so much like the Tesla Cybertruck where when I hit the brake pedal in that one, it was super soft. One thing the Cybertruck did really well is it had an adaptive damper situation. So it actually almost felt like it controlled some of the weight a little bit more than this vehicle does. I'm feeling a little bit more wallowiness compared to the Cybertruck. And the Cybertruck, of course, just had more outright power. Now I have not floored this yet, but we're good. I'm just setting the trailer brake gain to 5.5. And as I squeeze, just making sure it works, yes. And I really love how as I squeeze the trailer brakes on, I get a percentage as to how much percentage trailer brakes up to the maximum 5.5 gain I'm getting. Really, this is nice, uh, really nice. You know, the graphics may not be the prettiest, if that matters to you, I don't know. It's a truck, I just need it to work. And in this case, yeah, that's pretty cool. guys you actually joined me at wide open throttle because i need to get this thing up to speed and uh certainly we are down on power from the cybertruck or the rivian uh, you know I, I tow a lot with the rivian 800 and something horsepower cybertruck about 845 they're like 10 rated difference and yeah whatever this is which is like 400 kilowatts like still 600 horsepower yeah you definitely feel it's a little bit slower so let's do our first state of charge check-in as we turn on to wrist canyon and we are at 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour i don't trust it though this early on because there's initially always some inertia off that 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour before it gives you the actual uh rating for your trip now see we're already down to 1.4 so it's just been walking its way down it doesn't like start fresh it starts with a memory of 2.1 and then as i guess you add some distance that gets cleared out and then it picks up from where you started. So yeah, just a weird little thing. I bet we're probably at 1.2, 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour, somewhere around there. The Cybertruck I think was at 860 watt hour per mile. So 1.2, 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour um, at that point. So we're not far off, but I bet this is gonna go down. Now, the other thing that we did that I really like to do is to test the route planners on these vehicles. So we're actually gonna go all the way up to the top of the crazy hill climb and we're gonna drop a pin right here, which is where we reach the top of the climb. If it will let us drop a pin, does it not let you? Maybe not on Google now. Oh, maybe if we come to a stop, yeah. maybe we can just navigate to Ford Hill Road, FRD Hill Road. There, we gotta come, we'll come to a pause right here. We're just gonna pull over really quick, add this all in, and then we can test 
the state of charge upon arrival. So let's just come to a stop. We'll put it in park. Will it let us do it now? There we go, have to be in park. So it shows 82% on arrival. We'll see if we're actually at 82 by the time we get up there. Also good, we're letting some traffic clear. So we should be good to head out now. I'm gonna pull back up my um, screen here that shows me state of charge and kilowatt output. Uh, I really wish it would give me some temperatures. There's no way to get any temperature data in this vehicle in terms of battery pack or motors. That's one thing Ford does a good job of is right on your display at all times in the F-150 Lightning. You get your average battery pack temperature and a window of acceptability and your average motors temperatures and a window of acceptability. And they're always great with thermal management. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying this isn't. I haven't tried it yet, but it just would be nice to know what the temperatures are doing. So, wow, using quite a bit of power, feeling the weight of the trailer for sure, and certainly appreciating with this much load, a slower steering rack when confirmed uh, compared to the um, steer by wire on the Cybertruck. I really hope Tesla engineers dial that down a little bit. Rivian's also a quick steering rack for towing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't like cranking the wheel all the time in this and the Lightning uh, when I'm just driving around town normally. But when I put 10,000 pounds on the back of the truck, you're like, oh, this is safer. This makes sense. I get it. test just a little bit of power this is the straightaway where we put our foot down with the load so that's wide open to the floor 370 kilowatt power output 380 on its way close to 400 kilowatts of power output we're up we've drained the battery to the point where it can now accept 110 kilowatts of regen again this is a test that is meant to stress thermal systems it is not an instrumented repeatable test but it is one that we can somewhat compare between the vehicles it is colder outside than uh, when we ran the Cybertruck though it's 38 degrees and it certainly will be below freezing by the time we reach the top of Wrist Canyon so it is what it is we're right this is when we have the truck it goes back soon so it's still extreme test but the cold temperatures are definitely going to help it uh, cool down that's for sure just before we get up to the first major hill climb, I just want to show you that the vehicle does blend the trailer brakes with the regen on the accelerator pedal, which not every vehicle does. But you can see as I lift off, you can see it blends in the connected trailer brakes right here. So it's utilizing a the vehicle to slow down and also the truck. So for maybe some of the steep grades, I may choose to turn down the truck's output regen. So here, if I come to zero, now it's just the truck slowing us down. Just because when in the real world, I would wanna capture as much energy back into the battery. Um, but I have to say it does make the truck feel really stable under deceleration. Overall, this truck weighs a lot more than the other ones we've run in this test and we will run. And certainly it has a sense of stability to it. One thing is to sort of maintain speed. You can see we're doing about half power output right now, 200 plus kilowatts just to hold it at 43 miles an hour. Certainly I'm not needing for more power. If I need to accelerate, I can put my foot down and that's wide open climbing this hill. 51, 52, 53, really feeling the weight when you do that. And certainly it makes you appreciate how much more power the other trucks have. But once you get this big behemoth up and moving, you really don't need more. And the power feels so much more than a traditional, um, you know, V8, NA truck. You know, if you had a 5.3 liter 1500, this is certainly way beefier than that. Plus it's an eight lug. Like this thing's a, a pretty much a heavy duty truck <laughs> just because it weighs so much. So yeah, we're just climbing the hill normally. No signs of thermal degrading at this point. There is a trailering menu. I can come in here and uh, you know, talk a little bit about, or you can see some of the braking situations. I can put the trailer brake gain right here on my main display if I want it over here on this side. And so that's really nice. 
there's a checklist where it goes through checking your lights and all of these things. So yeah, what you would expect from a vehicle meant for towing, it has some nice things to help you with towing. viewers we are just about to approach the big first hill climb and I think the Silverado predicted an 82% arrival at the top and we're already at 81 before we've even started at the switchbacks and you can see we're just coming up to them here and so this is one of the steepest parts of the hill climb that we are going to be running today and um yeah, so this is really going to be interesting to see how it handles the low speed, hard throttle pulling out of a corner because this is what rapidly heats up inverters and stators and uh, honestly the Silverado seems to give you a little bit more power the faster you go. So now we're coming up, it's really slippery out here, if you take a look it's just pretty crazy conditions at the moment, but we're just climbing this thing, get it set through the corner and then we'll give it some beans as we accelerate up the hill here like this a little bit of wheel spin i've achieved full throttle it's giving us 260 kilowatts you can see the faster we go it's adding more and more power here we come up this way jordan's getting the exterior shot with the cyber truck very nice as we come into our corner really slow steering of course spinning the tires on the way up Gen. The brake lights do come on pretty early, which I think is a good thing. Anytime you're sort of even in a little bit of regen, it's got the brake lights on. And so we're going to climb, climb, climb. Come on, no, no issues with the truck at all. This thing feels beefy, doesn't it, Alyssa? Yeah, it's a big, big old Gantu beefcake. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Alyssa thinks this looks like Gantu. Okay, so here's where we're going to really thermal stress this thing. I'm turning trailer brake to zero. I want to put we're at 79% state of charge, so not far off the 82 estimated by the truck getting up here, but it is under. And that was, you know, six, seven miles for it to learn the trailer when we put it in. I'm going to use regen to hold this truck back. Now, if you remember after this in the cyber truck, we got regen dots and it basically crapped out on regen, but I still have more and more. I can tell that because the more I lift off, the more it's giving me regen. So we're just gonna hold it, try and hold it at 30 miles an hour on the downhill or just, I would say under 35 is reasonable. And for sure, this is not using any trailer brakes. It's just using the vehicle's regen. And if I lift off too much, we'll get some of the vehicle friction brakes. Now for stability, I don't necessarily recommend this, but for this test, this is where we really wanna see if this truck can handle true hardcore abuse. And I have to say it's already doing way better than I expected this thing to. No thermal limits at all at the moment. If I lift off completely, 150 kilowatts there of regen, even at 80% state of charge, just holding steady. <laughs> it actually keeps slowing us down. I have to keep adding a little bit of a throttle on here. Conditions are rough. It's cold outside though, 28 degrees. Just holding it at 150 kilowatts of regen. It is snowing. <laughs> Yeah, this is impressive. This is what we want. At 80% state of charge, even, it's got enough battery to take in serious regen, which is extremely important, extremely important here. Look at that, 157 kilowatts of regen, still it's able to do. I do have one pedal driving in high, so I'm just holding it there more or less, but no sign of degradation. 
Now, if I do put some trailer brake on, let's just go up to five really quick. Oh, you can feel it really clamp down, right, Alyssa? Yeah, it just gave you a chug a chug. Yeah, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. I really just want to transfer the heat into the truck and see if it can accept the battery charge. And it absolutely can. It absolutely can. It passed the regen test. I don't know. We got to come up with a good name for the regen hill. Someone comment with a good, exciting name. We're going to come up with little names for each bit of the rustic ring. But that props to GM. High state of charge because of big battery and just took in the juice. And even now, if I come down the straightaway, if I get it up to 40 miles an hour, this is where we do our full stop test, roughly 40 miles an hour. Look at that. We're completely off. Trailer brakes are off. Worst case scenario. And it's slowing us down. Not smelling any friction brakes, nothing like that and brings us to a stop perfectly. That's where I get the confidence from this truck, absolutely. I'm gonna put the trailer brakes back. I think five was a bit much. I think we'll go four and a half. Uh, I was running five and a half before. It just feels like it really does clamp down. You can see the output gaining um, when we use the trailer brakes when I lift off the accelerator pedal. We're passing the school. No kids out here waving this time, but the Cybertruck is behind us. If you look in the mirror, Jordan is using it for exterior capture. And off we go, it is gorgeous up here. So let's continue with the test. We'll meander our way over to, um, where the heck are we going? 69. Nope, we're going Rustic. to the Poudre Canyon. No, yeah. we're going to Rustic. Yeah, but that's after we get to Poudre. So let's just look at our stats in terms of efficiency. Wow, 0.4 miles per kilowatt hour from starting. Holy smokes really using the juice and that's after the downhill deceleration regen so this is that's over 2,000 watt hour per mile wow <laughs> yeah, but, it, but it doesn't feel like it's struggling at all no the truck you, you would have no idea this is so easy for it yeah it doesn't have the wide open power but I'm never really needing to go past half throttle and just for fun sometimes I whack it at full which I do with every or will do with every vehicle in this test just to really try and heat everything up uh, but it feels stable it feels great the steering is awesome for this kind of thing and yeah this is what this truck is built for right here real work no question Meanwhile, over here in the camera car, the Cybertruck, I have reduced regen and I'm not even trailering anything. <laughs> Great clip, Melissa. Thanks. Really good clip. Thanks. Creative. So I get paid the big bucks for this. That's right. just reaching the end of Stove Prairie Road. And you know, this is a road that is really just pretty much a lot of regen, a lot of tight corners. And this is where I really appreciate probably the weight of this truck adding to so much stability compared to towing. I think the Rivian's fairly stable to tow with. The Cybertruck was okay stable. This weighs thousands of pounds more and you just feel like that trailer is not knocking you around anywhere. Same load we had on the Cybertruck and it's awesome. Uh, we're up to 0 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour now, which is pretty good. Um, and we are at, we gotta do a state of charge check-in. Let's see what we're at, 83%. So we've gained a few. 
All right, there Jordan. There goes Jordan in the Cybertruck. He's going to be a little bit faster than us, so I don't want to give this thing a chance to cool down. So let's pull on out. I think it's nice to have a secondary vehicle when we're able to, so we don't have to stop so much and we can just keep the thermal load inside the uh, Silverado's drivetrain, if you will. So hard throttle now, getting up to speed. Make some cool whirring sounds. This thing is a freaking beast, Alyssa. Doesn't it feel like it? Yeah, it feels like a real truck. And then it ha it's electric, so it's like the plus side. Yeah, you don't get this. I mean, it's just instant response, really nice torque wave. It's not crazy fast, but you put your foot down and you're like, yeah, let me just stay into it. And the thing just, just pulls right up. It feels really good. So we have a lot of corners, a lot of beautiful canyons to go through. The lighting's going to be amazing. So you guys enjoy the views and uh, we're going to get us over to Larimer County 69 for the dirt road portion, which hopefully we hit before it gets too dark. Entering the town of Rustic, known, you know, this is why we named it the Rustic Ring, because we go through Rustic, Colorado. So what we're going to do is in a couple corners, we'll reach the downtown area. And uh, I'm just going to pull off, retighten the straps as we always do. We're going to get staged for the 69 Hill Climb, the Larimer County 69 Hill Climb, which will be, uh, this is the latest we've ever been out here. Hopefully the camera work is still comes out and you guys can see everything that's going on um, but yeah towing with this thing is an absolute beast let's get it up a couple corners get everything tightened down and then we'll be good to head out onto the dirt which I'm really curious to see how the traction control systems handle dirt and uh, there's a couple washboarded areas which might freak some of the sensors out we've seen it on vehicles before so let's see how the Silverado EV handles this it's uh, man, a dream to drive with a trailer on the back. Uh, my only complaints so far are the overactive trailer brakes when I lift off. I get it for stability, but I don't like it for efficiency. And also the accelerator pedal is a top hinge pedal and it's not near anything else in the footwell. So I can't really rest my foot on the right side and then modulate. So I'm having to hold my foot up on the pedal, which is a relatively light pedal. And my legs actually starting to cramp a little bit from just holding it on the accelerator pedal the whole time. It's a very unusual accelerator pedal where I can't kind of get my foot into a right area, you know, an area and then just hold it by leverage. My guess is they did this because of work boots. 
I think it'd be easier if you have a big foot and a big boot that you would have a little bit easier time hitting the accelerator pedal. But what you do give up is maybe that fine precision control if you can lodge your foot in a place and, and sort of side uh, hit the pedal if you will. I'm not sure I'm doing a good job explaining it, but that's at least what I'm feeling. the dirt let's strap everything down now I am gonna put the parking brake on there I can hear it clamp and then I can go into park yeah and it doesn't some clicking as it's lifting off the, oh that was interesting it slowly released the foot brake so I'm gonna have Jordan run ahead and get some shots on the uphill while I strap everything down off goes the fancy refrigerator and Kyle is strapping, tightening everything down to make sure everything is good. And then there's some cute ponies in the distance. Look how beautiful. Okay, always a good idea before you hit some twisty roads or new terrain or just in general, always re-tighten your load and yeah, just a little adjustment from the Rivian. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed about. Heated seats would be nice. It's cold up here. Yeah. In the drive parking brake off. Let's throttle down and head on up. Ice possible. Drive with care. It's 29 degrees out. Here we go. <laughs> Running this at night seems pretty sketchy. People don't realize truly how steep and gnarly this road gets. Yeah, I think once we actually throw a drone up and stuff like that, then get an, maybe we make an intro with the drone for everything <laughs> so everybody can realize how steep this is. I mean, I really realized it when I had to run up it. <laughs> yeah, and I realized it when I was wide open in the cyber truck spinning all four tires, just trying to climb. And now, of course, they've had snow and it's cold, so it's gonna turn to ice and it's gonna be slippery and we have 10,000 pounds on this thing. So yeah, Good just luck. need to be really mindful. <laughs> uh, interesting, I must have turned it out of trailer mode just there, it's back in tow mode now. Um, yeah, awesome. So let's do dirt. So far, I will say it rides almost even smoother than the uh, Cybertruck on here, Alyssa. What do you think? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't really re recall or remember, so. Yeah, the Cybertruck had a lot of wheel hop on the bumps, and we had to put it into relaxed mode. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this one is just heavy, and you can't even tell we're driving over straight washboards. It's just so smooth. Like, here's some crazy washboard. And yeah, it rattles a little bit. You can feel a little bit of jiggle, but it's not bad. The trailer keeps throwing off the blind spot warnings, which is funny. I believe we were at 73 or 74% at the start of the Larimer County 69 road. We're gonna do another one at the end of the dirt section. So, yep, we're just trudging through. I can feel it getting slippery out here. It's definitely a little muddy, a little, a little rowdy, but we're just staying in the throttle and pulling through. Guys, it's time for the hill climb. It's definitely a little bit slippery. I was feeling some front wheels pulling along. So, oh boy, uh, let's hope we make it. This is gonna be interesting. Let's do it. Here we are on the hill climb. Traction control really got in the way. I just had to have it matted up the last hill. I figured I'd bring you inside for this. Here I am to the floor. That is everything we got. 
traction control flashing away. She's climbing. She's digging. Oh, baby, like nothing. What a freaking beast. So now time for the park lock test. I'm just going to hit park. Oh, it does automatically clamp down on the parking brake. And then it does seem to hold it. It did creep a little bit, but there we go. So it is nice, at least on an incline, it will automatically put the parking brake on and the park lock. I'm not sure if it's a front and rear park lock, but it is at least a... Uh, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe they do parking brake on the front, park lock, parking brake on the rear, park lock on the front. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't really heard where the parking pole comes down, but it is nice to know there's a physical one just as a backup holding this huge weight down. And here comes Jordan coming to get me so I don't become bear food. Well, just like last time, we had to stop up here and just soak in the views. We didn't give it any cool down time on the uphill. There is still, of course, some uphill, but we are well over 8,000 feet of elevation right now. This thing has climbed without a power limit whatsoever. We haven't had a regen limit whatsoever. It honestly doesn't even feel stressed. It's a freaking beast. And here comes the Cybertruck up the top of the hill. <laughs> it's actually snowing a little bit up here. That was... A freaking epic trip. Wow. This thing climbing that hill. Yeah, traction control needed to let a little bit more wheel spin happen because, yeah, that was holding me back. But you could always turn that to a reduced setting and let it rip a bit more. She's running. Um, cool. Well, let's continue. Alyssa. Yeah, she goes. Yeah, just <laughs> lit up the tires pulling out of there. We needed it though. <laughs> Traction control sometimes a bit aggressive. So just to get this thing moving, you gotta sometimes kick it off on the loose surface just to get the wheels spinning. Cause it's icy and slick out here and wet and I don't know, but this is heavy coming from a dead stop on that hill. How'd it look from the outside coming up? It was loud. Oh, really? Yeah. You mean the trailer was loud? Yeah, I think the trailer was loud. Oh, okay. I don't, the truck doesn't seem to be making any noise. No, no, no. Okay. But did it look cool going up? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It was full throttle the whole way. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. It was spinning. Hell yeah. yeah. This thing's a tank. that says check trailer wiring trailer brakes disabled service required my guess is maybe the shaking has shaken the plug loose i'm not sure but i'm just going to check that great that it gives you the warnings though that is a real positive here that it is monitoring that situation uh is the trailer brake back no it does not appear to be back so i'm going to take a look to see what's going on there we've approached substation we've arrived in our total trip has now been down to 0.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, trailer brakes connected. Okay, so I think maybe the connection's just a little bit loose. I'm gonna put it back in. One nice thing is as soon as I open the door, the truck shuts off, shuts climbing off. As soon as I get in, foot on the brake, boom, we're good to go. So yeah, let me check the trailer brakes and then we gotta continue. Our efficiency is up to 0.7, <laughs> up to 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Auto hold really kicking in there, clamping down on the physical brakes. 
So that's really the end of the treacherous climb and dirt road stuff. Now it's gonna be those beautiful views. Well, maybe not at this hour that the light's gone down, but that beautiful downhill, just constant regen all the way as we uh, make our way down to where we started at elevation. There will be a small highway portion at the end so we can get an idea of how this thing tows at speed. And that will give us a pretty well-rounded picture as to what it's like to tow with the Silverado EV. So let's go head down to Livermore. We got 15 miles of pretty much downhill on this road. Seventy-seven kilowatts of regen right there 190 really doing quite a bit of regen and uh, partially I think one of the reasons that the efficiency uh, is so low while trailering in the mountains with this vehicle is again that dependence on the trailer brakes it is always every time you lift off grabbing trailer brakes right now I've set the gain to zero I'm just using the vehicle to slow us down and Honestly, the stability is great and I love the ability to use more regen. So my suggestion to the uh, engineers at uh, GM would be to yeah leave the default settings like this for stability. I understand the safety one, but let us have a, an option that says um, trailer brakes only when foot brake is pressed because that will let us max out the regen. And then when I hit the foot brake, then blend in trailer brakes. That would be my request don't know if that would be too dangerous from a stability perspective but that is how the Tesla Cybertruck works that's how the Rivian works although the Rivian might do a tiny bit of trailer brake blending uh, when you lift off the throttle for regen um, yeah out of the deceleration no limitations in this and I actually kept the trailer brakes off the whole time so now we are approaching 287 just coming by the store over here the historic forks food and fuel and um, the headlights on this truck by the way not incredible I wouldn't say bad but I wouldn't say good they're very mid maybe the RST will have better headlights Anyway, 0.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Now we're gonna get this thing up to 65, 70 miles an hour. Let's just give it the beans. That's full set, climbing, 55, 58, 60. See, the faster we go, it almost feels like the more power we get. We'll throw the trailer brakes up for a little bit more stability, just in case we need to make a maneuver. And I love that I have the option right here at my fingertips to dial in exactly how the trailer is uh, interacting with the vehicle. Really great stuff. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's cruise on the highway now. Highway, it's our local, <laughs> basically fast two lane road. And wow, you can't even tell there's anything behind us, can you, Alyssa? No, not at all. This is, this is nice. I mean, yeah, coming into some corners, yeah, we'll definitely feel some of the weight. Especially as we come around here. Yeah, this is I definitely feel the weight of the trailer now But in a straight line this thing wafts. It's amazing So here we are coming under throttle going for a pass Of a truck. Awesome Boom. Just keeping it nice and gentle for stability Oh yeah, very nice
are now coming off the highway and back into the city portion towards the end of this drive. Have to say, cruising down the highway with this much weight is, I mean, we're maxed out right now on this truck and it feels unbelievably understressed. It just floats along, really gives almost this heavy duty like vibe where it's just like 10,000 pounds. What the heck? That's nothing. Uh, very impressive how well this thing handles the weight, how you know safe it feels honestly to tow with in comparison to some smaller trucks. Uh, I'm really loving the way this thing cruises. Not to mention it's just quiet and has ample power. I wouldn't say it's crazy fast, but it has ample acceleration, especially at the top end. And man, this thing is just a cruiser. Once you get the RST version with Super Cruise, I don't know if you can use Super Cruise when towing, um, I definitely got to try one out, but uh, definitely got to try that out. But yeah, either way, it just would be nice to have it. This does, by the way, have adaptive cruise control and it has a towing version of adaptive cruise control where it has a gap adjust specifically for towing. And on top of that, if you want just manual cruise control, you can shut off the adaptive portion and just run manual cruise as well, which is, I think a lot of people when towing really don't want to have the risk of a slowdown in the middle of a corner for stability reasons. So having the ability to go to a manual cruise is key for towing, I think. approaching the end of the rustic ring with just a little final maneuver as we go into the parking lot. You can see quite a lot of turns lock to lock on this truck. So you just got to get real comfortable with working the steering wheel. But I would say it's not that bad out in the real world. This was really a nice experience towing with the Silverado. No question, this thing's a beast and it will set the benchmark maybe for years to come in our test in terms of arriving back here with 62% remaining. The Cybertruck was what, Alyssa? 30, 36? 36%? 38%? 36 or 38? I think 36%. You might be right there. Um, wow, that is just big ass batteries. Now we average total a thousand watt hour per mile or one mile per kilowatt hour. And uh, it doesn't really get any more granular than that. But so we used roughly 86 kilowatt hours, but that's really not that bad. We use 70 something kilowatt hours in the Cybertruck. What's interesting to me is um, when we did our towing over the Rockies video, they were all about the same efficiency, except here for sure, this is less efficient than the Cybertruck. Now it was a colder day, yes, and we maybe did a little bit less stopping, but I would say the driving style was about the same. Couple wide open hits here and there, just like we did. And I think one of the reasons this consumed so much more energy again, was that the trailer brakes were constantly activated. And so we probably, burned a lot of uh, kinetic energy as heat loss in the trailer brakes rather than as regen in the vehicle. I'd really be curious to see uh, what some of the chassis engineers at GM think about maybe allowing for a little bit more regen, a little less trailer brake. Maybe it's a stability concern. I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, so let's, let's pop out. I'll give you my final thoughts and then we'll end this video. Well, that brings us to the end of the rustic ring. Some final thoughts. We actually used the Tesla Cybertruck here as the filming vehicle. Maybe you saw that throughout the video. And um, this is the only vehicle we've run in the rustic ring up until the Silverado. And we had major regen issues while towing where, you know, we had to use friction brakes and the friction brakes were smelling and, you know, it just basically ran out of regen. But Jordan just mentioned to me that he also ran out of regen without a trailer. So that's really needs some work here uh, in terms of allowing some regen. Nothing to do with the Silverado, just wanted to point that out. I hope the Tesla engineers are watching. Uh, this thing is a freaking tank though. Yeah, it's heavy. It's got all the battery capacity in the world and it's finally like the first electric vehicle that I would recommend someone to go and use to tow. Now, in terms of a cost savings <laughs> using this as a tow vehicle, I'm not sure it's there. From a fleet perspective, if you're using this as a work truck, there's a lot of incentives, there's a lot of money on the table. If you have cheap charging where you are, it starts to make sense. But using this, especially, you know, I'm thinking the consumer version for maybe someone watching this video down the line, this is a $80 to $100 charge 
to fill this thing up zero to full on a public DC fast charger with reasonable pricing. So, you know, you, you're really not that much far off of gas, but I do think a lot of people just want an EV, um, like me, where I love to tow with electric. I love fast charging. One of the things with towing is having unbelievably fast charging is so important. This thing will charge at 350, 360, 370 kilowatts, coming off of 300 kilowatts above 50% state of charge. So you can really rip it up there. Um, and you get easily with a normal trailer, 250 miles of range while towing, which is about what the Cybertruck does without towing. So it's really, really useful. Uh, a couple downsides here overall, I would say, are, of course, the regen strategy the accelerator pedal just has a lot of room in the footwell. Probably good for boots, though. The rear charging port is a massive miss on this vehicle. I mean, huge miss. This is a vehicle meant to tow, meant to work, and there just are not pull-through charging stations in America. Uh, very, very, very few of them. And most people will have to nose into a charging station. Tesla got it wrong as well. Rivian got it right, putting the charge port right up front. This is where a charge port should be, or Chevy should have offered a secondary charge port location on the Silverado with a tow package, perhaps. That would have been, I think, something pretty useful. Um, definitely the truck is heavy. It has a lot of materials and it's quite expensive, but damn, do you get a lot of usability if you're using this truck? My opinion is I think a lot of people need to talk about this truck a little bit more. You can hear the efficiency comments as a daily driver, this battery's overkill, but GM will sell you one, Chevy will sell you one with a smaller battery if you don't need the 4WT. And in fact, probably, I don't know what the mix is gonna be. I would bet less than 10% of them are gonna be the big 200 plus kilowatt hour pack. This is the Hummer EV pack, the Escal Escalade IQ will get this pack, the 24 module, but I bet most work truck Silverados are two or three WT, would be my guess. Anyway, truly loved it, thought it was amazing, really performed well, ran into no limitations at all, and of course ended back here with so much range. I mean, the truck is still predicting with the trailer, let's just see how much range it thinks I can go if I put my foot on the brake here, another 170 miles after completing that crazy loop. So based off of this drive route, I could do it three and a bit times, which is just insane. So this is a useful truck. It sets the benchmark. It sets where electric vehicles for towing in this test need to be in order to perform well. I'd love to see the efficiencies improve a little bit, but when you can't go for efficiency, just smash a big battery in it, and well, that's what they did. So nice work to the Chevy team, and um, yeah, I mean, this, this is just, you know, next level usefulness when it comes to a truck. It's very appealing to me. Thank you all for watching another Rustic Ring. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about this test in the comments. This is the second running. We still have some time to make adjustments uh, as we go forwards, and I'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye. I'm <laughs>